Hey folks, I'm Patch Loss and this is Code Club. In today's episode, we're going to take this slope chart showing people's attitudes towards receiving the COVID-19 vaccine from the fall of 2020, and we're going to modify it so that instead of coloring by the 15 different countries, yes, we have 15 different colors, which is a problem, right? So instead of 15 colors, we're going to try to re-represent the data using two colors, one color to indicate a decrease in intent and another color to increase the increase in intent. We're also going to see how we can use a gradient to show the degree to which people's attitudes changed rather than the absolute intent to change. So stay tuned and I'll show you how we'll do this. Okay, folks, I'm over here in our studio where I have the code that we left off from the last episode. Looking back at our code, we have our libraries that we are loading in as well as our fonts to make things look <laughs> not default and make look a little bit more attractive. We have this pipeline to create a data data frame. Um, we have this other data frame for creating the country labels and indicating where to place them. And then we also have our ggplot pipeline, obviously. And so in ggplot, on the x-axis, we're putting the month. So again, August or October of 2020. The y-axis is the percent of people in those countries who say that they would be willing to receive the vaccine when it becomes available. We're then grouping it by the country so that we have a line connecting the two points and each line representing each country. And then color, we were representing by the country. So I wanna change this to be change. And so we don't have change yet, so we need to go ahead and add that to our data data frame. So again, if we come back up to data, I'm gonna look at the state of the data frame before we do the pivot longer. And what I see is that we have the country name and then the column for August and the column for October. And what I want is to create a column called change. So I'm gonna create a column that I'll call change, and then I will use a case when, and I'll say August less than October tilde increasing, and then I'll do August greater than October is decreasing, and then I will then do true, for basically when they're the same as each other, and then I'll say stable. And so now if I run this chunk of code uh, through to stable, I now see that I've got increasing, decreasing, and stable. That all looks good. I'll run the rest of that pipeline, looking at data to make sure everything is here, and we see that we still have that change. Now let's go into um, our pipeline for building out the figure and run that up. Oh, and I'm getting an error that object change not found. And I know exactly where that's happening. That's happening up here in my Geome text repel where I'm using the aesthetics uh, that are coming from ggplot. And so I'll need to modify this uh, to then say X equals month, Y equals percent, label equals country. But otherwise I wanna inherit dot AES equals false, which means I don't want the color coming from change. So now our slope plot has in red those lines that are decreasing, green those that are increasing, I know this is not red green colorblind friendly, and those that are stable that haven't changed in blue. Um, we need to go ahead and change the colors, but I think one of the things that I'm struck by immediately looking at this is that it's much easier to see that they're decreasing, right? Um, there's 15 lines here, it gets to be a jumble, but when I see 15 red lines all kind of going in the same direction that says, wow, there are, or I guess not 15, there's uh, t 10 lines going down and to the right. Wow, there's a lot of countries that have decreasing intent to receive the vaccine. I think it becomes a little bit more clear what's going on rather than coloring by the country. So let's see if we can improve that a little bit more. What I wanna do is we are going to use a custom scaling of our colors. And so after labs and before theme, I'll go ahead in here and do scale color manual. And then my name is gonna be null. So we can set the name of the title of that legend. We already have done that up here in color equals null. So you don't really need the name there, I don't think. We'll do breaks equals uh, decreasing, uh, stable, and then increasing. And then for our values, we'll then do C for decreasing, I'm gonna use blue. Uh, so we'll do hashtag uh, 0000 FFF, that's the hexadecimal for blue. Uh, for stable, um, I'm gonna put in white, and so we'll see what that looks like. 
I'm picking white for a reason that we'll come back to by the end of the episode. And for increasing, let's do red, which is FF and then all zeros. And then for our labels, um, I'm going to use the same values as our breaks. And then I'll add the plus sign. And so now we see, again, decreasing blue, increasing red. Uh, the white for India and Canada is hard to see because we have all those grid lines in here. So I need to go ahead and turn off those grid lines in my theme function. To do that, we'll do panel.grid equals element blank. So that got rid of uh, those grid lines. And um, it's now a little bit easier to see the white lines. I might make it a little bit thicker, the size of those lines. And again, we can adjust the thickness of our line by coming up to geom line and let's do size equals one. So I think the thicker line makes the lines pop out a bit more. I could make the background darker, but then it's gonna perhaps just be overwhelmingly dark. I'm not totally a fan of that. We could achieve that by coming back and doing panel.background um, equals element rect and then do fill equals and let's say a, 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 a. So that dark background really does help bring out the white lines uh, for Canada and India. Um, so there's, there's trade-offs here, right? Um, the dark background makes it a little bit more heavy. Um, the white makes it clear that there's been no change. Um, in this case, we'd say white is kind of the absence of change, right? And I think intuitively that works. Blue we think of as being cold, so it's decreasing. Red as hot and increasing. Um, I've chosen not to include a legend here. We could put in that legend by going back to geom line and saying, you know, show.legend equals true. But I think the colors are intuitive and I'm gonna make the design choice not to add a legend. Um, there's something else we could do to make that more clear. I could make this word decreasing blue. And to do that, we are going to make use of something we talked about a few episodes ago when we talked about how we can format text. And so back up here in my labs function, at the decreasing, I'm gonna put in a span. And again, this is HTML. We'll do style equals, and then in the single quote now, because I'm already in double quotes, I'll do color colon, and then I'll put in the blue, which is 00FF. And then I close with the single quote and uh, the greater than sign. And then after decreasing, I need to back out of the span. And so I think that decreasing, again, in blue, makes it clear that things that are decreasing are in blue. This was looking at increasing or decreasing or staying steady as basically a dichotomous variable, as a discrete variable. But what if I'd like to make it a gradient to show that China really fell off, whereas the United States, sure, it's blue, it's decreasing, but it only went down a couple of percent. How would we represent that? So instead of making change a categorical or discrete variable, I'm going to make it a continuous variable. And because I want you to have this in the notes, uh, if you go check out that blog post, I'm gonna leave it in here, but I'm gonna comment it out. I'll do change equals, and then I'll say October minus August. And now if I look at data, I will see that that change column is a continuous variable. And now I've got color as change. And for the time being, I'm gonna come down to my scale color manual, and I'm gonna comment this out as well. And we see that we get um, this continuum of blues. So I need to now come back up and turn back on my legend, change show legend false to be true. And so now I've got this legend going from very dark at minus 12 to lighter blue at four. I would rather have this blue of decreasing be minus 12 and have a red color of four. And then I'd like to have something in the middle to indicate zero. If I, if I was going from zero to some value, then I would want this kind of monotonic change in color. But because I'm going from negative values to positive values, I need to show that change um, between two different colors because I'm going to two different ends that have different values, different um, you know, negative and positive values. To do that, uh, we'll come back up. And again, I'll leave that scale color manual in there for you to look at later if you wanna grab the notes. I'll do scale color gradient and we'll do name equals null again. And then I'm gonna set a high value, which will be, again, a hexadecimal will be the red. So that will be FF0000. And my low value will be blue. And so I'll be 0000FF. And again, you can use whatever colors you want. Um, for me, I typically associate red with high, blue with low. And so now what we see is in fact that the high change, so positive change is associated with red. 
and the low, um, the low change, the, the decrease is associated with that blue. But something I'm noticing is that we have kind of equal red and blue right around minus four. I would rather have white at zero to indicate zero as being kind of neutral, that there's been no change. Um, and so we can change that by modifying our scale color gradient to be scale color gradient two. And then we can put in mid to then be white. And to do that, we'll put in all Fs. So now what we see is that we have the lighter shades showing up right around those countries that didn't change as much. And so clearly China changed a lot. Um, and that, you know, something like the US and Spain were these lighter shades of blue indicating a kind of a couple percent decrease in, uh, you know, the intent to receive the vaccine. One thing you'll notice is that the saturation that we see of the red at positive four is comparable to the saturation we see in the blue for negative four. And that what we see is that China is dark red because it has such a large absolute value of decrease. Something that I'd like to try is let's limit the bounds to plus five and minus five and see if we can't kind of squish everything that's less than minus five into that dark blue color that's fully saturated. To do that, we can come back up to scale color gradient two. I can say limits equals uh, C minus five to five. And so what that does is it does constrain the limits from five to minus five and we see full saturation at those two bounds but the values that are outside of those bounds are turned gray because the scale color gradient two is converting those values into NAs and representing those NAs as gray. We could tell it to take those NAs and represent them as blue, but you know that might not work so well if we repeat this with future data and we see actually something that went up, right? So say a country went up by 8%. We wouldn't want that to be blue, we'd want that to be red, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to modify my code so that if it's a change of greater than five, then I'm going to indicate that it was five, okay? So I'm gonna modify change using a case when, so I'll do change equals case when, uh, change is less than minus five, then I wanna return minus five, right? If change is greater than five, I wanna return five, right? Um, otherwise, so if it's true, then we're gonna return change. And so now if we look at data, we can see that the change is bound by negative five and five. So China has been turned to minus five. I now see that China, Brazil, UK, Japan, um, I think that's Germany and Spain maybe, and France are all solid blue, um, but I'm not indicating that it's less than minus five, right? And so what I'll do is I will come back up to my scale color gradient two, and I will go ahead and put in some breaks. So my breaks are going to be uh, five, 2.5, uh, zero, minus 2.5, and uh, minus five. And the labels are then going to be um, greater than 5.0, uh, 2.5, get rid of that extra parentheses I got in there, um, uh, I'll do 0, 0.0 uh, and then minus 2.5 and then less than negative 5.0 and then I think I'm missing a uh, parentheses. So this again bounds our color scheme between a bright red at five and, and higher and a solid blue at negative five and lower. You could quibble that it's a little bit deceiving because you're lumping China in with Brazil and UK um, that don't quite have nearly the same level of decreasing intent to receive the vaccine. At the same time, I would say if your change is greater than 5% negative from over two months, then that needs to be highlighted, right? That's a big change. That's beyond what you might consider as being kind of the margin of error of uh, the poll that Ipsos conducted. So I'm okay with leaving that as negative five. And I think that's um, in, in, good, in good shape. So again, for telling the story of decreasing intent for receiving the vaccine. I think this tells a compelling story. The challenge with this, of course, is that it's no longer possible to more to easily link the country name to the line itself. Um, as I talked about, there's ways that you could perhaps move the point that the name is connected to using geom text or geom text repel. I'll leave that for you to go back and look at that previous episode and see if you can't figure out how to do that. If you do, 
leave the co code down below in the comments. I know the code gets a little bit funky, um, but maybe we'll revisit in a future episode and, and take a look. Otherwise, I think the story really is about decreasing intent. Anyway, like I said, this is not a perfect plot. We're kind of marching through different ways of working with this slope chart. Who knows? We might get to the end of this and say, you know, those dumbbell charts that Ipsos and Chartar made were, were pretty good for, you know, the, the limitations of the data. Keep practicing with this. See if you can't incorporate these other things that we've been talking about over recent episodes to see if you can't make this even better. Make your own figures even better. Who knows? Anyway, we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.